Good morning and welcome to another episode of On My Bookshelf, where this morning I'm going to be looking at photographing the Snowdonia Mountains. Now, as you can tell, I'm not at home in my nice warm chair with my bookshelf behind me enjoying a cup of coffee. When you come to look at a book like this, there's only one way to do it and that's to go on location, have a look at some of the spots in here and go out and photograph them for yourself. But that's not all. I've got a proper treat for you today. I'm actually going to be joined by the author himself, Nick Livesey, and we're going to spend the day out in the Snowdonia Mountains, going through some of the locations in the book and hopefully taking some amazing landscape photographs. So yes, good morning. I'm here in Wales to have a look at photographing the Snowdonia Mountains. And as you can see, I'm joined here by the author himself, Nick Livesey. Hi, Nick. Hello, Julian. You <laughs> right? Yeah, I'm all right, mate. <clears throat> so I'm really happy that Nick's agreed to come out with me today. He's going to show me around a few of the viewpoints in the book. I'm going to take some landscape photographs and hopefully have a better crack along the way. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be awesome, man. Shall we get started? Come on, let's go. Okay, so here we are on Cogwin Mower, which is a lovely little lump just above Capel Kerrig, and it's part of the Crimpy Eye Walk in the book. Uh, it's an easy location to get to, it's only about half an hour from the car, and the view is just tremendous. The bang for book is just unbelievable, it's amazing. And the view sweeps all the way around from Moyle Shabod to the Snowdon Range over there. We've got a Voil Gorch and Gashtarogov with Travan just poking over the top there. Then it comes all the way around to um, the Carnedai, which have got some great names like Penner Helgidir and um, Penllithrigur Arach, and comes back around to Craigie Glacian and Crimpiae, which is the main summit in this walk. It's absolutely awesome, man! So now that we've had a little intro about the area, it's time to take some photographs. We came up here when it was dark, but now we're just starting to get some really nice morning light. It's just some nice dappled light on the mountains. We weren't expecting to get anything, but I think it's going to be turned out to be quite a nice morning for the photography. So we're going to get a camera out and we're going to take a few pictures. Let's see what they look like. Good morning, wasn't it, Nick? It's not bad at all. Yeah, it turned out better than we thought it was going to be, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, it didn't look too great to start with, yeah, did it? Yeah, no, but we've got, hopefully got some good shots from there. Yeah. It's a nice location up here, isn't it? I like it. It's my local one, too. It's only half an hour from home, so... Yeah. Walk straight from the door. You've got some cracking place names up here, though, haven't you? Yeah. What's some... that one over there you said was called again? Oh, that's Penllithrigurarach. <laughs> Which means what? That's the Hill of the Slippery Witch. <laughs> yeah, and what was the other one? As Penur Helgide, yeah, um, the black, the hill of the Black Hound, and behind us, far in the distance, there's Carnether Villiast, which is Cairn of the Greyhound Bitch. Yeah, they've got some pretty clever names, the Welsh, haven't they? They have, they have. They're clever people. Yeah. So, are we going to take more photographs? We're going to get breakfast next. What are we doing? More photographs or breakfast? I reckon we should go down to Llanai Mumbird. Yeah. And have a look there, and then go and get a bacon butty or something. That sounds awesome, mate. Let's do that. Yeah, come on. All right, we'll see you in a bit. Welcome to the, the Soul of Snowdonia Gallery. Um, we're hosted by the Moyle Shabod Cafe in Capel Kerrig. And this is where I sell my book and I also exhibit some of my prints. Have a look around.
So I've had breakfast, I'm all fueled up and ready to carry on and do a bit more photography. But while I was here at the cafe, I've decided to come in here and look at the gallery. It's a really special place. Yeah, as you all know that I'm a big fan of printing. I love printing my images, I love seeing them coming out and having something tangible to look at. So I really appreciate coming into a gallery like this with the, it's a lots of high quality images and they're beautifully presented. If you come here, you know, and you, and, you know, if you're following the book, you know, you're likely to want to go out and take photographs. But part of any trip to here should really include coming to the cafe, food's really good by the way, but also to come and look at the gallery, even if you don't pick up a print, which you really should because they're absolutely stunning, but just to have a look around and be inspired by other people's work as well. An absolute must if you come into the area. The most significant print of mine in here is this one here and this location is very special to me and it's quite poignant. It's a place called, um, it's in the Hrynogith Mountains which is my favourite area of Snowdonia and we've got Hrynogvach, Shinhawel and it was taken from the side of a Shetha. Now a little bit about the photograph, it's actually a panoramic stitch of nine images taken in landscape orientation so it would have been done like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine but with um, a conventional aspect ratio, it looks like a normal, a normal shot. So if you go there with a, a normal wide-angle lens you'd, lens, you'd wonder why you couldn't get it all in. Well, that, that's why. But it, the reason it's so special to me, this place, is because I was studying this very spot six years ago, and I received a phone call from my fiancée, and she told me to get lost. She'd had enough of me. It was over. And it was in that instance that I knew that I was going to move to Wales. And the very next day, I moved out, and I, um, I packed my car, and I moved here with no job, nowhere to live, and it's the best thing I've ever done. Okay, so here we are, we're in Llanberis now, and we're just going to commence our walk, which is we're going to go up to Moyl Aelia. But um, what I'd like to talk to you about is this book here, Wales. And that's the reason why I discovered the mountains in the first place. It's an old book by a guy called W.A. Poucher and he was the preeminent mountain photographer of the 40s and 50s and 60s. And this book was my inspiration. I got it from a local library when I lived in Peterborough, that's where I grew up. And I looked at some of the pictures and I was blown away by the scenery and I couldn't believe that this was Britain that we had here. And that sent me on a journey which got me into mountain walking, scrambling, winter mountaineering and rock climbing and eventually the mountains became my life. And he, Poucher was a really interesting guy, Walter Poucher. He was the chief perfumier for um, Yardley. And he used to spend a lot of time around Capel Kerrig, which is uh, the, the village I live in now. And everybody tells me that he used to dress up in gold lame suits and white gloves. He used to wear makeup. And he was a real flamboyant character. And for his time, a great photographer. And um, he's long dead now, but thank you, Mr. Poucher. You set me on a great journey. Right, we've had breakfast and uh, now we're heading up for our second destination. We, we scrubbed the, the other destination. Where were yeah, we going to go again? We didn't go to Llinai Mumber because uh, Snowdon was plastered in clag and we thought, oh, bugger it, let's yeah. get straight to the main course. So we'll come here, we're going to get a, a big, sort of reasonably big mountain walk up here. Yeah, it's a strenuous day today. We're going to be doing about 11k. And we're going to be going on to Moyle Aelia, which is behind us. And before we do that, we're going to walk around this valley, which is called Mycecombe, and then up onto the ridge. It's interesting because we're on the western side of Snowdon now and up there now there'll be hundreds of people milling around in various states of dress <laughs> while here in Mycecombe there's nobody. No, we've met a couple of people on the walk but they've all been coming down, haven't yeah, they? Yeah, I don't yeah. think we'll see anybody else yeah. which is always nice. But yeah, no, I'm, I'm glad I've got here you with me because as, as majestic as those mountains look with that snow on it, oh, fucking, they look terrifying to me, for, to the person that's not maybe used to going up in the, in the mountains but I guess that's where mountain safety really comes into its own and not about going up mountains that you don't think you should be up or... It's common sense, yeah. Julian, isn't it, really? I mean, I'm a qualified mountain leader, but that's a summer award, yeah. so I'm out of my remit. If I was taking money off you now, uh -huh. I would be out of my remit. Well, that's reassuring but, to know. But <laughs> I'm, I'm, I think we'll be all right. We'll be all right. I think we'll get we'll, away we'll, with we'll, it. We'll get away with it, but, um, yeah, no, it's, it's kind of one of those locations. During the summer, yeah, but up there, I think you've got, you've got to be practical about what you can do. 
Yeah, there's I, a lot that can, that can go wrong, you yeah. know, but I did the walk yesterday. Yeah. So I know what it's like and you'll be absolutely fine. Yeah. I'll lend you my axe. Anyway, excellent, excellent. So, because there's no point in risking your life just for the sake of a bloody picture, is it? No. It's just, it's just not, it's just not worth it. So, um, but we've got a bit of a walk, but we've got plenty of time. That's Can I just thing. share one of my favourite quotes with you? Please, by all means. It was by a guy called Steve Ashton who wrote Scrambles in Snowdonia. And he said, um, no mountain is worth a life, but without mountains, perhaps no worthwhile life remains to be lived. That's a good one, that. I like that. You've, you've been coming out with them well today, haven't you? Well, you yeah, know. You're very poetic. It's full, great. Full of shit, me, aren't I? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, so we're going to get cracking. We're going to get uh, we'll walk up that side of the hill. How long will it take us to get to the, the top, the summit? I reckon two or three hours. Two or three hours, and then we're going to take, hopefully, get a sunset, and we'll take some images. Fingers crossed. Right, we'll see you at the top. What a walk that's been so far. So we just come up to the first kind of elevated bit. We've got a bit of a steep climb coming up, but what a beautiful walk it's been. I mean, the light has been amazing. You've got either dark clouds where the sun's been breaking through and lighting up bits of the landscape. Just absolutely spectacular. But I'm having such a good time. This is, this is absolutely brilliant. This place is amazing. I'm so lucky to be up here. The views are absolutely spectacular. And it's made all the better, the fact that I've got Nick here with me. Just a, a fountain of information. He knows about all the names of all the peaks and he's always got some story to tell. It just makes the experience of being up here just that little bit extra more special. But it's special in its own right anyway. I mean, the views, the views are just amazing. I mean, okay, it's a bit of a walk to get up here, but my God, it's been worth it. Um, we haven't even got to the top yet, so we've still got plenty more to shoot, but we've come up to this kind of plateau now, and um, I think it's time to get the camera out and take some more images. Okay, so we've had a long hard slog up here. We're now on the summit of Moilelia and we're gonna stay for sunset. It's really quite bitterly cold, but it's absolutely magnificent. It really is something else. Look at Snowdon over there. Absolutely tremendous. What a place to be. Okay, well, I am freezing up here. My hands are cold, my feet are cold. My face is cold, but it's been oh so worth it. The view up here is absolutely amazing. I thought the view down there was good, but up here, it's just utterly spectacular. The sun hasn't set yet. It's about, I don't know, about an hour and a half, uh, sorry, about half an hour to go, I think. And already you're getting lots of bits of light on the mountain, covered in snow, the sky's full of clouds. I hope it's gonna be really spectacular. I am so excited. It's been such a great experience coming up here today. The book itself, absolutely brilliant. I mean, if you come and do this walk, you won't be disappointed. The views are, are amazing. And the good thing about it is you can chop and change. You can do different bits of it. You don't have to do the full walk. It's just, it's just a great book and very inspiring to come out here and actually do one of those walks and especially to do it with Nick as well. But we're going to take some photographs now. Anyway, I'm excited. I can't hold the camera any longer because the wind is actually numbing up my hands. So we're going to set my hands on my gloves, warm them up, and I'm going to take some pictures. This is such a magical place. We're just waiting for the sun to go now down below the horizon, but it's really put some really nice soft pink and orange colors on the mountain snow. And the shadows from the peaks are creating nice shapes across the other mountain ranges. It's just really, really spectacular. And you know, all this walking, trudging up through the snow, freezing cold, all being worth it to capture some really nice images up here. What an experience, what a day. Couldn't be happier.
come to the end of the day and what a day it's been, hasn't it? It's been amazing. Really enjoyed it. I have to say, I, I've been trying to tell the camera a couple of times about how magical this place is and, and what, a, what a privilege it's been actually to come out up into these, these mountains and kind of, I have to thank you for obviously bringing me up, but also introducing me to a little bit of the Welsh culture, taking me to the calf, you know, and meeting some of the, the Welsh people up here. It's, it's, it's really vibrant and exciting up here. It is. I think you've had quite a, an authentic experience yeah, yeah, today. Yeah. And it's been a real pleasure just showing you a little part of Snowdonia. And you've obviously we just scratched the surface, yeah. but it's been really great to have you here. So if people wanted to learn a bit more about Snowdonia Mountains, is there any advice or any books that you might be able to recommend? Well, I do know of one book. Oh, would it be this one here? It's that one there, the yeah. Photograph in Stodonia, Yeah, man. I know the bloke who wrote that. I think I met him once. Yeah. He's got a bit of a reputation, hasn't he? He has. He's supposed to be a bit of a wally, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, this book is absolutely beautiful. And one of the things I want to add is that if you haven't got this book, you should really get it. Um, but even if you don't think you'll ever visit the Snowdonia Mountains, it's packed full of other stuff as well, like mountain safety, equipment, just general good mountain... Uh, advice about taking photographs. Yeah, yeah, there's all sorts on there, even a guide to the Welsh language so you can pronounce the names of the hills properly. And you'll be blessed to know that I didn't even attempt it because I'm, I'm really don't want to get hammered by the Welsh. I get bad, bad enough trying to pronounce Scottish names. But the other good thing about this book is actually the, the pictures in it are really amazing. So even if, <laughs> even if you didn't come, like I say, even if you weren't coming to Wales, you could actually look at this book and actually just flip through and read the stories and the descriptions and look at the pictures. It's just well worth getting, wouldn't you say so? I would say so, but I would say that, wouldn't <laughs> You I? would say that. And if you wanted to get them, they're still available at your website. So you can get them at nicklivesymountainimages.com or photoview.com. I'll pop the link in the bottom of the screen. But I think it's time for us to head down now. We're, we're the last ones up here, aren't yeah, we? Yeah, yeah. Steak and beers, I think. Oh, it's absolutely freezing as well. So, Nick... Thank Cheers, you very Julian, much. Thank you. And thanks everyone and I uh, hope you enjoyed this one and we'll see you in the next one. Cheers. Bye.